Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith and this is your place for professional video production techniques. The subject of this reveal, highlight a face and zoom in. Premiere Pro has got a great mask tracker to help us track something in a video. We're going to highlight a face and then we're going to zoom in and sometimes if you've done this kind of thing before where you've done an animation and then you've done something to the animation you might think you have to do things like nest timelines and pre-compose. We can do it all with one layer and one well one layer and two masks instantly inside Premiere Pro. Let's go have a look. So here is our clip. We're going to highlight this guy's face right here as he walks through the crowd and we're going to zoom in at the same time. But one of the problems is his face is obscured at the opening of the video. So we're going to start to track him with his face already in view. I'm going to zoom in first to 200%. I'm going to tap the H key for my hand tool over here just to help me pan into position. So I'm going to start by drawing a mask with his face fully into view. So that was with the H tool that I had in the hand. Don't use the move tool or you're going to move stuff around. All right. Next up, select the video. Oh, I need my move tool now. Select the video and in the effects, we apply an effect and the one that we're going to use is brightness and contrast. So in my effects controls, um, there is brightness and contrast and you can see right away we get a bunch of masking tools and we get an ellipse and a, a four point polygon. Both of these you can add points or you can just draw a free form. Uh, one tip about drawing a mask is draw as few points as possible uh, because if you need to manipulate that later you're going to have to manipulate fewer points. So I'm going to grab the top of his head right up in his forehead and I'm not going to go around the outside of his head. This is an object tracker. It wants an object. So inside the face. Click, drag to the right. And you can see I drag on a handle. Go over to the right hand side of the eye. Click and drag downwards. Go to the chin. It's a little bit narrower than the forehead. Click and drag to the left. Back over to the opposite side of the face. Click and drag up. And I still need to click and drag up here on the top. If I don't, I'll have smaller handles. All right, so now I've got the position of his face. I'm going to zoom out here to 100%. And uh, over on the right, sorry, over on the left, you can track backwards one uh, frame, forwards one frame, track back or track forward. I'm just going to click track forward. I'm going to put my hand over the stop button just in case it starts to lose the track. I want to stop this as quick as possible. You can see it's doing a pretty smoking awesome job and I can expand that mask after I've tracked it. You can see it's tracking all of the uh, position, rotation and scale and we might have a little, oh, we don't have a problem there. So let's keep that going. It's going, it's going. Um, see how we, we tracked a little bit lower on his face because of that being obscured? Um, I'm going to move this back here and tuck that back in there. So notice I've, I still have keyframes in here. If I track ahead, I'm going to actually correct the rest of those keyframes. And I'm not sure why I have keyframes in the position or scale. I must have added those uh, when I was creating this demo. So disregard that. So back a little bit, fix my track. Where did my mask go? Click on the mask and now track it forward. And it's going to retrack those frames. Again, I'll put my uh, mouse over the stop button to get ready to fix that if the tracking goes wrong and it might be going wrong. I'm going to tap the H key. Oh, we're at the bottom left of the video right now. So there's no big problems there. And we finish that track at the end of the frame. So it did a pretty good job of tracking his face. Excellent. Let's go back to the beginning. And if I click on this button here, it's going to go to the next keyframe, which was the first one I tracked. Click. Now I'm back to that first keyframe. Now I'm going to track backwards and see if this obscures. It does. 
So because he's walking in front, I'm going to have to correct this a little bit more. Let's move forward. I'm just using my scroll mouse. Fix that. Let's track this back one frame at a time. We don't have the accuracy when his face is so obscured like that. I'm basically just manually tracking at this point. We're highlighting his face, so this really isn't that important because the highlight won't be there uh, once we remove with the guy in the front. All right, I think you get the point. Okay, so we have our mask. And before I start turning on the dark and light inside here, let me go back in where he is about. So that's the beginning of the frame. I'm going to grab an elliptical mask at this point. So here's mask number two. And mask number two is down here. It's it, puts it in the center of the screen. So if you're zoomed into an area, you might find that that mask, you can't see it. So the only thing I really care about is the top of this guy's head to the point where he's obscuring the guy in the back. So let's track his head forward. Again, my, my hand is over the stop button. I'll let that get out of the frame. Okay, so now we have two masks, one going in front of him and one highlighting in the back. Let's go to the brightness and contrast. Remember that was the effect that we added. Let's go to the first mask. And if we turn the brightness down with our first mask selected, it's gonna turn that down inside. So if we invert that, now we've inverted that. Let me zoom in so you can see what we're doing here. And the mask expansion on him. There we go. Max expansion, feather. Now we get that obscured inside there. Okay, it's a bit jerky because we have that, um, that manual track going on. Okay, so here we have his face highlighted and we can even, let's turn the contrast down in the background and darken this up even more. So he really pops out, it's really obvious that it's him and we, if we feather that it's going to look pretty good okay so that's the first step track the face highlighted but he's so small way in the background we want to zoom in and to do that we're going to go back up to the top into our motion settings here and this is where we're going to set uh, a scale and position keyframe right there and then let's change the scale and position so i'm going to scale this up and move the position just numerically by using hot text. So I'm clicking and dragging on the numbers. Oh, a little bit too far. And now the final result, highlight the face and zoom in. Pretty darn easy. I mean, I had to do a little bit of manual tracking in there, but uh, um, you see how I can do almost visual effects uh, level um, effects inside Adobe Premiere Pro and all of that stuff is happening in real time. I don't have to render it. So that's how you highlight a face and zoom in. Hopefully you found this informative. If you have, then please click on the subscribe button to video reveal. If you're not already an Adobe Creative Cloud user, there's a special link in the description for you to get your free 30-day trial. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith. It's my job to get you looking your best.